Hello and welcome to another Hot Pixel Productions tutorial. My name is Gerald Berliner and in this video we are going to take a look at what is widely considered as the most advanced way of creating highly detailed and accurate masks from the luminosity values of an image. Now to get the most from this video you will need to have a good solid knowledge of masking and definitely have the concept of white reveals, black conceals etc. If not, I would suggest you check out my two previous videos, 01 Beginner's Guide and Introduction to Layer Masks in Photoshop and 02 Beginner's Guide and Introduction to Adjustment Layers and Masking in Photoshop. Once you have your head around those, this may start to make a lot more sense to you. Now in part one, we will briefly look at what luminosity is and then by using the RGB channels panel, we will begin the creation of multiple additional channels that target very specific luminosity values within the image. Then in part two, we will look at how we can use those channels to create custom masks and how those masks can be used in conjunction with adjustment layers to make extremely accurate and targeted adjustments across a wide variety of adjustment parameters. Now my goal is to move slowly and methodically through all the steps, so let's roll up our sleeves and dive into the powerful world of luminosity masking. Well, hello. Well, first of all, let's try and define and simplify what is meant conceptually by the word luminosity. Well, let's just take a quick look at this um, file that I've created. All I've created here is a simple white to black uh, gradation. And in essence, what luminosity is are the lightness values across the tonal range within any given image. Now, in terms of the tonal range, it's really quite this simple. Basically, three key areas. The lights over here, through to the mid-tones, through to the darks. And without wanting to go into any further science, running the risk of boring you, conceptually, that is basically all luminosity is in the context of an image and certainly in terms of what we need in order to be able to create our channels and then from our channels then create the actual mass. So let's go back. Phew. Thank goodness we're not going to be looking at a gradation all night long and begin the process of looking at the channels. What we have here is a RGB image, red, green and blue. Now the red, green and blue are split into three separate channels. Not surprisingly, the red, the green and the blue. Now as you can see, they do change in kind of hue and tonality based on what the color channel is. And that's basically, so like if we click on the green, you see how much lighter that kind of gets. That's because there is you know, a much, much stronger of presence of green on that particular channel. Henceforth, if we just then click on the blue channel, it'll appear very, very dark because there's actually very little blue in this image at all. And red, um, yeah, there's a fair amount of red lurking around in between these, uh, the, the, the yellows and the greens, and certainly in here that you can tell there's going to be quite a lot of red. Um, so what we're basically going to do to start this process, we're going to now start to create um, our lights channels. Now in order to do that what we have to do is just click on the composite RGB okay. and we now want to command on a um, command click or on a Mac or control click on a PC to make a selection. With a selection in place what we now have to do is to come down to the bottom and this icon here, this, the, the rectangle with a hole in it and that is save selection as channel and that's what we're going to do. Now, now I'm just going to press command H to hide the anthill mob. I haven't deselected them, I've just hidden them so we can now look at what we've created. Photoshop has now created a channel that it automatically will name alpha 1. Now, We'll rename these uh, as we go along because obviously that is going to be quite important. But for now, we'll just leave it as Alpha 1. Alpha 1 is a composite of the blue, green, red channels in terms of luminosity. We've basically made a composite luminosity channel of the composite RGB image. 
Now, as it stands right now, this would be our basic lights channel. Now, what we're now going to do is if I bring up, uh, press Command H to bring back our marching ant guys, I am now going to press down three key modif uh, three three modify keys. That is the Command Option Shift keys, and that on the PC that would obviously be Control Alt Shift. And I am now you'll see that under my little hand there, there's a little bounding box with an X appearing in it. Now, I'm just going to click once now. And what Photoshop is doing is now constraining that selection to the next 50% lightest or darkest pixels in this, in this selection on this particular channel. Now, having made that click, what we now need to do is go down and save this selection as a channel and it will create alpha 2 and what you can see is it's getting gradually darker because as we now do the same thing another three times it will constrain even further that selection on these particular channels so instead of waffling on let me just go and do it okay so with this now highlighted and our marching ants um, active I am now going to command option shift click one more time it's going to constrain it even further I'm now going to come and save that selection as a channel thus creating alpha channel 3 I am now going to do the same thing again command option shift click I am now going to save that um, selection as a channel to create alpha channel 4 and last and very least command option shift again click to constrain even further and save that now I am now going to press command D to deselect and let's review what we've done what we have now done is create all our lights channels lights 1 lights 2 lights 3 lights 4 lights 5 now if you are familiar with masking you can tell what's going to be happening if we created an adjustment layer mask from this particular channel and let's say we added an adjustment layer and we brightened everything a lot of this virtually all of this image will be affected by that consequently if we were to create a mask from alpha 4 here you could see that that adjustment would then become far more targeted with obviously white revealing black concealing only the lighter portions of this channel and obviously the mask that we consequently make from it will be directly affected by whatever adjustment we're, we're making so that is why luminosity masks are so much more powerful because of their accuracy they are pixel for pixel accurate to the actual master image you're going to be working on what I now need to do is just quickly go through and double click on each of these um, new alpha channels and just rename them lights now I'm just going to break here and go through and change everything over from uh, lights 1 through to lights 5 and after I've done that we're then going to create all the dark masks now what we need to do now is to create all our darks channels and in order to do that we're going to go through the exact same process in terms of key commands etc 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 but with a slight twist when we click on our master R composite RGB layer up here to, and have our selection come up what we now need to do is invert this selection and we're going to do that by simply pressing command shift I on a Mac Control shift i on a PC and what that has done that has inverted that selection what I'm now going to do is save this selection as a channel and what we have done now is we have created our basic darks channels and we are now going to go through the exact same steps but to constrain these selections to create all our dark masks just as we did with our lights so what I'm going to do now is with this selected I'm now going to command sh uh, uh, option shift click once I'm going to save that I'm now going to highlight alpha 
two. Command, command option shift, click. Click on that. Click on alpha three now. Command option shift, click. And last but by no means least for darks five. Command option shift, click on this and save that. And what I'm now going to do is deselect, and that's exactly what we're doing. Now we've created all of our dark masks. Right, so just to keep things everything neat and tidy, a little break while I just go through and rename all these darks as darks 1 through 5. Right, so there we go. I've now uh, renamed these darks uh, 1 through 5. So it's all looking good. <laughs> and now we have to create all our midtone masks. Now I will be the first to come clean and say as when I was learning how to do this this was the one that was yeah definitely a little bit more tricky to initially get your head around so I'm not really going to go into too much technicalities about what's going on and why I think the best thing for you to do is just just kind of like follow me verbatim in terms of what I'm doing and not worry too much about you know why the whys and wherefores now in order to create our midtone mask what we have to do is we have to come back to our master RGB composite here and we have the first step is just to go command a on a, on a Mac or control a on a PC in order just to select it all okay now we have to come down to our lights one and then we then hold down the command and option key on a Mac control alt on a PC and click what click once now what we're doing in order to create these metals is, is we're subtracting lights okay now after we've done this we now have to come down and click on our darks one channel and do the same thing press command option click now you'll get this warning dialog box coming up saying no pixels more than 50% selected the selection edge will not be visible well that is okay we don't have to worry about that it's telling lies there is a selection there trust me now once we've done that all we need to come do is come down here and save that selection as a channel and what we've done here is through that slightly confusing um, process we actually have created our basic mid-tones um, mask so the process to complete this mission Jim if you do accept it is to now come back to our composite command a select all now this time we need to come down to lights 2 and command option click and then now come to down to darks 2 command option click now save that as a channel and what we have now done is create our expanded midtones channel so next step would be to deselect that command D deselect come back to our cons uh, composite Command A, select all. Now come down to lights three. Command option click. Now down to darks three. Command option click and save as channel. And we've now created our wide, uh, our, yeah, this will be our wide midtones. So, command D, deselect, back up, click on now, composite, command A, select all, now, just click on lights forward to select it, command, option, click, now down to darks 4, just hi click on it to highlight that channel, command, option, click, and save. 
And what we've done there is that we have created our super midtones, or our super wide midtones. And last but no means least, let's deselect that. Click on a composite. Command A, select all. Come down and click on our light 5 channel. Command Option click. We'll come down to our darks 5. Command Option click and save selection as channel. And there you have it. We have now, I'm going to just Command D to deselect. And we have now created all of our midtone channels through from our basic midtones through our um, expanded midtones to our wide midtones to our <laughs> super wide midtones and maybe down to what you could call our ultra wide midtones and I don't know actually how ultra more ultra that could get but there you have it so again quick break while I just tidy things up and rename these mids 1 through mids 5 okay so that's what I've done. I've now named these mids one through mids five. So that's what we've done together. If 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 um, you know if you've gone through this again and you've decided to uh, join in on an image of your own, and uh, you know we basically have um, fifteen new channels: uh, lights one through five, darks one through five, and mids one through five. Now you know. From a from a concept standpoint, you know, you you, you thinking you have to be lumbered, you know, doing this every time you uh, um, open up an image to generate all these masks. Well, yes, you could, but as you may obviously realise that there's a lot of things in Photoshop that you can automate, and this is one of them. And as an extra bonus, and thank you for watching. I have actually created a custom set of actions that is available for download in the show notes, there's a link to it, uh, called GB Actions. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on all of these channels that we've just created together. And as I say, that's 15 of them. Uh, and I'm just going to delete all these. And move this over here and coax onto the stage my actions panel and here it is GB actions now with just one click of a button that whole process is going to be automated for you now it doesn't matter what image you're working on as I say this is a custom action set that I created just retracing all the steps we went through. Now you probably might be a bit cheesed off thinking like, oh, well, why didn't you tell us that up front so we don't have to sit here <laughs> through this watching you do it. But I think it's important that you understand that kind of the, the process by which you can go about it because you know you may not want to generate all masks at once. You may just want to target one particular thing and if you know how to do that, great. Hopefully you do now. Now, as I say, if you, I'm assuming you may have made your own actions so you're familiar with how you kind of load actions. Um, um, again, actually, I'm not even sure you. If it, I've actually got, if you're not familiar with this viewing um, uh, mode for actions, there's two states you can have. I'm actually in button mode, and if I just click on that, it may go back more to the familiar list mode. But here are my GB actions, and if I just toggle that down, you click on the first one, and then we just go down to play, and the whole thing would automate, and you'd have all your lights one through five, darks one through five, and mids one through five. Uh, and if you're not too sure about how you get actions into your actions panel all you would need to do is to download it unzip it and you could stick that um, the dot action file whatever it, it extension is wherever you want or you could, on your computer and then all you need to do is to come up under this um, button here at the top and just come down to load actions and then all you would need to do yeah it's a, it's a dot atn file so wherever you stick it uh, on your computer just navigate towards it double click on it open it up just cancel that and in it will come and hopefully that will be a nice nifty little time saver if you want to generate all your um, luminosity channels um, just one thing to bear in mind the only um, I would say pitfall of generating all this at once you've got to be really careful because within each new channel that you're creating there's virtually the same amount of information as there is in the composite image so 
right now with all these images, uh, sorry, with all these channels created and loaded, I'm looking at a 1.7 gigabyte image here. Yeah, I know. And if you don't have a ramped up computer, things are going to start going pretty squirrely very quickly. So you kind of got to keep on top of this. If you do use a channel, uh, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, I know. But if you if you use the particular channel to create a mask, um, once you've created the mask, or if this if you know you're going to create masks from maybe two or three of the channels, just get rid of just just delete all the rest, just to keep the overhead and file size down, so you're not you know. As I say you're not getting crushed on on uh, on memory space and or you know running the risk of Photoshop keeling over and dying. Now in part two, if you want to join me in part two, what we will now do is we will start to begin to use these channels as the basis for creating replicant masks to use in conjunction with, as I say, adjustment layers in Photoshop. So I'll catch you in part two.